I was asked about the uh, mold I used for the, or the pattern I used for my um, Bolly uh, faceplate. Um, this is it here. It's, it was my first attempt at a, at a, at a, um, a match plate mold. Uh, totally unnecessary for this job. I just wanted to wanted to give it a try. The part, the pattern itself was 3D printed in three parts. It's about uh, 210 millimeters across, uh, and I I use a um, baked sand core for the hole in the middle. So it just goes on the pattern like this, with uh, in, the, in the flask like this. Flask lines both sides. You ram one side, flip it, ram the other, cut some gates. Here's the raw casting straight out of the mould. So this is the first successful iron casting I've ever done. Um, I've tried iron six times, this was the sixth attempt. Um, for a variety of reasons I had a lot of different uh, different failures. This is the first one I consider a, to be a success. As you can see when I started machining the uh, the boss for the for the spindle. I do have a an inclusion here, but it's still cut quite quite nicely. I, I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Um, otherwise, there's a few little voids there and there. Should no no great issue. The surface finish is pretty horrible because I didn't put any uh, any facing any coal in the facing sand. Um, I put a boss boss on the back to uh, to hold it in the four drop chuck to uh, to machine these features. Um, I'll then set it up on the I'll cut that off with an angle grind. Set this grinder. Set that up on the mill. Um, I'll I'll cut the um, spindle thread using thread milling, and then remount it on the, as a as a face plate and finally turn the outside and the the main face once it's uh, once it's mounted on the on the spindle the additional boss was then cut off with an angle grinder midway through filming the main camera i used started acting up so i switched to a second camera unfortunately uh, once I'd finished everything and started cutting the video, I found out that the audio was off. So, unfortunately, this video is going to be a uh, voiceover. I made a pair of gauges a few years ago when I first got the uh, Bolly. Um, they're not really a go, no go. It's, go, it's more a uh, slightly loose, loose fit and a slightly tighter fit, but they give you an idea of seem to work. I ended up very happy with the uh, with the resulting fit. The thread is a is a nice running running fit. Uh, the alignment boss on just behind the thread is supposed to be very close tolerance and is. You can see it goes on quite tightly. Um, this will loosen up once the, uh, once the machining marks wear out of the, the bore. So when I need to first machine the, the outer edge and the face before we can then mount it on the, um, mount it on the mill. Now engaging the back gear to uh, slow down the lathe and then using a carbide insert to start uh, facing off the uh, rough casting. Obviously the, it's pretty hard on the insert at this stage. Yeah, after a couple of passes, that first insert was uh, was blunt and had the corner pretty much worn off it. So it was time to change inserts.
it was at this point that I noticed that I was running the lathe too fast. I thought I was running at the slowest possible speed, but uh, actually I wasn't. Basically I've got two, uh, two reductions from the motor to the intermediate uh, shaft and then from the intermediate shaft up to the spindle. So I need to be running at the, at the um, maximum reduction on both that first and the second reduction to give 71 RPM. So here I'm uh, it's moving the, the secondary reduction down to the lowest speed. Uh, some bollies have a lever to make this more convenient. Unfortunately on mine, that lever mechanism for shifting the belts uh, not installed, so you have to reach in and do it manually. Generally pretty grubby job, so that's why I'm using, uh, using gloves. And then the next, uh, the next part of this task is to, uh, is to move the input pulley from the motor to the intermediate ch um, drive f down onto its uh, lower gear as well. At the lower speed I had no more problems with, uh, with wear on the inserts and in fact I could even use high speed steel with a big radius to give a nice, uh, nice final finish. Here you can see a slight uh, shrinkage defect by the end gate from the casting but the, the wall thickness is thick enough here that it cleaned up okay. In general, I'm very happy with the uh, machinability of that cast iron. There don't seem to be any hard spots in it. Everything machined really nicely. Um, yeah, it worked out really well. Yeah, the surface finish cleaned up quite nicely. There's very little chatter out on the out on the outermost diameter. A couple of very minor casting defects. One tiny defect in the in the edge, which you, can, you can't see on the video there. Um, now it's ready for the slots to be machined in. So the slots are being machined with a 10mm 4 flute carbide end mill. Um, I just hand wrote the, uh, the uh, toolpath using a macro. Um, yeah, very simple because really you've only got it got uh, four coordinates to it in, in using p positive and negative uh, X and Y values gives you your four four diagonals and then the other two are simply uh, straight along the Y axis so it was all pretty easy to to program. I did make a minor calculation error um, which brought the innermost um, innermost point of these slots too close to the hub. I wanted to leave them uh, five millimeters from the hub so that when I cleaned up the the surface around them, uh, I could give more. I could have a nice symmetrical um, uh, machining uh, machined portion. So I then switched to the uh, twenty millimeter insert cutter um, to just to give it clean up the back there a little. The um, surface is rough enough that it would be kind of a pain for um, for clamping parts to the face plate to have your uh, your bolts clamping against that very rough surface. So the aim here is just to give a, a nicer surface to clamp against. And that's the end of the milling. From here it's just uh, onto the lathe for the final final step. Yeah, and that final step is to uh, machine in concentric grooves just to aid as an, aid the alignment when you're uh, setting up a, a part on the uh, on the faceplate. I did these with 15 millimeters between grooves.
And there we have it, the final faceplate. I've never seen a Bolly faceplate come up for sale, um, so it probably won't get used that much, but it's one of those tools. When you need it, you need it.